Hello, and welcome back to the Tax Equity Modeling course. And in this lesson, we will review the scenarios we've created with respect to the tax equity transaction structure, and we will run the scenario macro. We have added a large number of scenarios to the scenario manager, which is on the input sheet. And what we're trying to see is how the deal structure, particularly how the DRO limit of the tax equity partner and the cash distributions between the parties, will affect the PPA price, loss reallocations, and the project leverage. First, we have the base case scenarios, where we increase the DRO limit of the tax equity partner from 35% to 100%. We want to see how the increase in the DRO limit affects our financial model. We expect that an increased DRO limit will allow the tax equity partner to absorb more losses, and therefore, there will be fewer tax credits reallocations to the sponsor, and there will be bigger investment from the tax equity partner. And bigger investment from the tax equity partner decreases loss reallocations on top of the DRO. We will then take a look at the scenarios where we distribute 95% of the cash to the sponsor in the first five operating years. And we will also increase the tax equity's DRO limit. Next, we've got the scenarios where we've increased the required IRR by the tax equity partner. However, as compensation, the cash sweep in the P99 case will go down from 95% to 50%, and we will test these scenarios across different DRO limits. What we expect here is an increased back leverage loan size because cash flows to the sponsor in the P99 case will be bigger. However, the investment size of the tax equity partner will be smaller compared to the base case because his required IRR has increased to 7.5%. Then, we will increase the pre-flip cash flows distributed to the tax equity partner to 50% from year 6 to year 10. This should have a positive impact on the tax equity's investment, and therefore, the project leverage should rise. Increased investment should also result in less reallocation of the tax credits to the sponsor, because tax equity will be able to absorb more losses with increased investment. However, increased cash flow to the tax equity will result in less cash available for the sponsor and therefore smaller debt size and we will see which effect of cash flow reallocation should dominate. Next, we will test the scenarios where we, again, distribute 50% of the pre-flip cash flows from year 6 to year 10 to the tax equity partner. However, we will reduce the cash flow distributed to the tax equity partner in the P99 case to 50%. In these scenarios, we expect that the overall project leverage should increase because our back leverage loan will go up because of the P99 cash flows, and tax equities investment should also increase because of the increased cash distribution upfront. In other words, we are giving more cash upfront to the tax equity partner, but we are reducing the possible cash distributions in the P99 case. We will test these scenarios across different DRO limits. So, what we are doing in all these scenarios we are trading certain things for the increased DRO limit and increased investment from the tax equity partner. As we've seen in the previous scenarios, we may give to the tax equity partner a 7.5% IRR, and in return, we may require a higher DRO limit. Or, we may give more cash up front to the tax equity and require a higher DRO limit. We will then test our model with PTC set at $25 per megawatt hour, and we will see the impact of increased PTC on the results of our scenarios. PTC of $25 per megawatt hour is what the renewable projects are getting now. However, soon, the PTC amount per megawatt hour will decrease, and we will see how the economics of the projects will change. And finally, We've got the case of solar, and we will be running two scenarios here. Having reviewed the different scenarios that we've got in our scenario manager, we can now run our scenario analysis macro. This will take some time, so we will see each other in the next lesson.